Welcome to West Tech. This is where all the testing gets done. Everybody who's in our industry comes to West Tech Performance out here in California. Even the manufacturers that you know are, are on the East Coast, everybody sends their products out here for an independent dyno test. So today, Claysmith Cams has rented the dyno and we are going to do some camshaft cylinder head testing on our hydraulic flat tappet small block Chevy line. West Tech has tons of customer engines here that they do testing for. They have a uh, Superflow 600 bench that they independently test um, cylinder heads for all the different manufacturers in our industry. Um, you know, independent testing. Engines upon engines and testing equipment. And over here they got just rows of intake manifolds for different companies that they test for. And this is one of the dyno cells here. They have two dyno cells here at West Tech. One here, they got a small block Chevrolet on. And of course, this is the world famous Steve, the dyno <laughs> operator. And in the other part of the shop, they have their second dyno cell. And that's where we'll be testing our engine today. Right in here. Horse cam and a 400 horse cam. It's good. 
this camshaft, this is a 224, this thing should idle at 12 or 14, yeah. which is enough for power brakes. Um, there we go, 400. Just like that. First camshaft test, um, so they have to be at exactly the same water temperature to make it a fair comparison. So I would get it down to 124 and then try and rev it to 6,000 and then move on from there. Yeah, 25 horse more, that's good. Out of one little cam chain, right? But we always figure for 25 horse. It's a 400 or small block. There you go. So here we're looking at a dyno graph. These are the two camshafts we just installed. This is the 264 OB Claysmith cam torque graph. Oh, no, I've got about one. And then this is the horsepower curve here. So the red line indicates the RV style cam and then the next upgrade is our 274 cam on a 108 lobe center. You can see the differences in power and torque. Okay, now you guys, we are going to try some 1-6 rocker ratios on the intakes. And thanks to the guys at Comp, we feel that their rocker is a very good rocker for a small block Chevy application. And, uh, yeah. So here is a Comp rocker that we're going to be installing. It is 1-6 ratio. We plan on putting them on the intake side. Um, it is a chrome molly rocker, not aluminum, and it should withstand all endurance applications, including, you know, this, this test mule of an engine that we have here. And Comp makes them, and uh, you can buy them here on our website, claysmithcams.com. So we also have a 7900 length push rod in this engine, and it, um, you know, has these trick flow heads that some it sells. Um, and did not need to change the push rod length when we're going to the 1 6 ratio rocker from the 1 5. Everything looks like it's going to be pretty close to center on the bow. Well, I'm going to turn it down to like 56, 57 in case it goes into premature. And I'll watch it 100 at a time or pick it up a couple hundred at a time just to be sure that it doesn't go into any sort of instability problems. H274 AB high lift in this 350 Chevrolet with the trick flow heads. Uh, this is the second cam of the day. Uh, made 25 horse more than our H264 OB. And we're getting ready to slide it out to put the, uh, the 300 ground in. So you can see we just put a long bolt here. Kind of make it a little easier to get the cam out. So I just put the uh, cam lube in, and I put it in my hands and, and rub it on all the lobes. So you can see the third cam of the day is going to be our H300 8BLD. LD stands for long duration. So again, it, it makes it really nice for the uh, spreading of the cam lube on our camshafts because we do such a good job on the deburring process in between the lobes. 
so there's no sharp edges anywhere on our cams. So you won't be cutting your hands when you do this. And that really helps not have premature lift or failure. Okay, so this cam test has made it very easy on us thanks to Summit Racing and their tin cover here that is two pieces. Uh, it's made it very easy to not have to change or drop the two oil pan bolts to change the camshaft. We got to give a special thanks to the guys at PRW for sponsoring us on the dyno session with this uh, harmonic balancer. It's made it very easy to take on and off and has worked great this whole time. Specific torque won't change. Okay. Just going to move everything upstream, tilt the curve. Okay. So we'll make more top end, probably in the MR rev up here. And see where peak torque is going to occur now is up down, down here, not back here. Right. So, okay, we're right on track. where you want the power. Yeah. You want to go drag racing, then you obviously want the bigger cam. If you want something street, a street car, you might want the smaller one. So you're really just contouring the power curve. Yes, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. So 
roughly about 25 horsepower jump in each size cam. Give or take. Or 20 to 25. It's interesting to me a little bit seeing the, the smallest cam versus the 224. I was just saying I don't know where you'd really use the 214 uh -huh. unless it was truly a pickup truck or RV right. situation where there's something to be gained below 3,000 um, because there's really nothing to be gained above um, or even at 3,000. So today we tested three cams here at West Tech. This is the smallest cam here, our H264 OB, made 367 horsepower at 5600 RPMs. Our next cam we tried is our H274 8B HL, it made 405 horsepower at 5800 RPMs. And then the last cam we tried is the H300 8B, and it made 420, almost 425 horsepower at 6000. Now that we are done with the uh, test here, um, we got a special thanks to Summit Racing here for this carburetor. This carburetor is a Summit Carb 750 ECMS, is what it says on the spec card. It's a 750 double pumper with an electric choke. It has adjustable air bleeds, sight glasses here on the float poles. And the beautiful thing about this carburetor is we ran three camshafts through it and we didn't have to adjust the jetting at all. All we had to do was screw with the, uh, the four circuit uh, air mixture screws when we went to the last camshaft that had mo more overlap. So if you can zoom in on this spec sheet here, you can see the jetting and everything that they provided with the carburetor. We did not have to modify any of this setup. Now that we're through testing, I'm very happy and pleased to say how well the AFR dual plane eliminator intake worked. Um, a lot of people would choose the Edelbrock air gap, which is a very popular choice for this combination on the 350, but we really think that the uh, AFR eliminator dual plane intake far surpasses the performance of just the conventional Edelbrock air gap. And we're happy to be able to use it on this test. Hello guys, uh, hope you enjoyed watching our uh, dyno cam test. Um, I think it was very successful, but I wanted to take a minute before we ended the video out to explain uh, to the potential customer what application would fit um, each camshaft probably the best. Um, let's start with the first cam that we tested, which was our smallest hydraulic grind, kind of similar to like an RV style. Um, that would probably be a camshaft for a guy, you know, that wants a little bit better than stock uh, sound out the exhaust and a little bit more torque and performance in the mid-range RPM level. Uh, we took some notes while we were dyno testing, and uh, that H264 OB Clay Smith cam, which is uh, 214 uh, degrees of duration at 50 and 264 uh, duration advertised on a 110 lobe center. Uh, we installed it at 107 on the intake center line. And uh, when we put that camshaft in on the dyno, I pulled 18 and a half inches of vacuum. So that cam will work good in almost all applications that need power brakes, um, you know, just a ton of vacuum to operate, maybe those headlights and those older Corvettes that pop up. Uh, so, so that one is a, a really, relatively mild performance cam. Um, that cam, as you've seen in the video, made 375 on the horsepower and somewhere around 400 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, also, um, you know, that, that particular grind uh, was relatively mild on the valve train and carried well to 5500 RPMs. So the next cam that we uh, ran was our H274 8B. 
for the customer that's looking for a little bit more performance on the top end and through the mid-range. Um, that cam delivered 405 horsepower on the dyno at right around 6,000 RPMs and it pulled very well. Um, it did produce around 12 inches of vacuum at 900 or 850 RPMs thereabout and uh, that should be plenty of vacuum for the customer uh, that has power brakes or um, you know needs some type of brake vacuum assistance uh, for their vehicle. Um, you know I mean to make 400 horse out of a small block Chevy with a little 274 cam I think is pretty pretty good uh, and that would probably be the one I would choose to drive around in my you know Nova or you know my restoration car I think you're getting into the category of making the same power as a more expensive hydraulic roller um, which is pretty impressive and so the last cam we did was our H300 8B LD so the LD stands for long duration and it's got a 300 degree advertised and that cam is uh, 236 degrees of duration at 50 thousandths and um, you know that thing pulled all the way up to like 6300 on the dyno and it made 425 horsepower uh, that cam though is, is only going to pull about 9 to 10 inches of vacuum at you know 950 or so rpm idle speed and uh, that, that one would probably be more for the guy that's going to go out and be on the drag strip. You know, that's going to have a lot less low-end torque and more mid-range and high RPM horsepower. So, you know, for the street guy, don't always just fixate on the peak power number. Um, I don't think you're going to basically be able to use that high RPM camshaft, which is the 300. Um, if you plan on going to the drag strip here and there, that's a good choice. You might need some stall, uh, stall converter for it. Um, but, you know, it performed really good. 425 horsepower out of a 350 Chevrolet with a hydraulic flat tappet is nothing to be disappointed with. And again, this, this engine was everyday parts. Uh, flat top pistons, uh, around, you know, right around 10 to 1 compression. Um, we used, I uh, have that information here, we used that Summit Racing Carburetor. Uh, that part number, I don't know if we got it good on the video, is a uh, Summit Carb 750 ECMS. And uh, they retail that carburetor for $350. So that is a great price for that carburetor. And those trick flows um, that we did most of the testing with, uh, they retail those for about $1,400. So we didn't have to do anything to those heads. We bolted them on. We used a 7900 length uh, 5 16 push rod. Um, and those that length push rod was used in all three of the different camshafts we tried that day. So if you guys are, you know, kind of trying to develop a top-end package, uh, all those components will, will work. Um, and then one of, the, one of the last things we needed to touch on um, also is um, we use 40 weight Valvoline oil in this engine uh, for these flat tappet cams, uh, VR1. And VR1 oil, uh, we feel and have felt for the last 60 years, is definitely compatible to be used with all flat tappet camshaft application, applications. Um, so uh, that's the oil that we use, and we never changed it. We ran three camshafts and two different sets of cylinder heads, and um, took all the cams just fine and, and the performance was there, ring seal was perfect. So if you have any questions about the oil, that's what we would recommend, the Valvoline. Um, and I guess the last thing that we got to talk about, so on Friday, uh, which was the last day of our dyno test, we did unbolt the trick flow cylinder heads and we bolted on the AFR 180s. Um, we had our last camshaft in there, which was the H300 and uh, when we bolted the AFR 180 CNC heads on, uh, we picked that motor up from 425 horse to almost 450. So the AFR 180 heads are definitely a little bit better flowing head being a full CNC port than the Trick Flow 195s. But you got to remember, guys, the Trick Flows were as cast. So there's nothing to, um, you know, bring down Trick Flow. We just put a fully CNC ported head on there. And of course, it delivered about 25 more horsepower. 
Um, AFR is a great company. Again, we didn't have to change anything on that head. We just bolted it on and picked up that power. So the whole idea behind this cam test was one, to showcase our hy uh, hydraulic flat tappet cams, but also to just kind of show the customer you don't really need to spend the extra money on a hydraulic roller. Um, although we'd love to sell you expensive hydraulic roller cams and lifter sets, if the budget isn't there, don't feel like you, you know, you can't build a performance engine. Um, you know, the, the heads really do make a difference. And of course, selecting one of these three camshafts will get you to where you need to go uh, performance wise.